uh, I want to talk a little, bit, a little bit about what I do again. Uh, I do seminars. Uh, I also am a chiropractor. I do kinesiology. Um, my probably main kinesiology teacher, um, second main, he taught me a lot of his particular system, Dr. Alan Beardall in clinical kinesiology. But I think the man that I owe most of my kinesiology knowledge and experience to is Dr. John Bandy from Texas. But Alan used to say, take a patient from where they are to where they want to be, not from where they are to where you want them to be. And so you had to do, again, what George Goodhart, the innovator of kinesiology, said. You had to listen to your patients to see you know, where they wanted to go, what they wanted from your therapeutic uh, viewpoint. And in my seminars, uh, what I am curious about people is what they want. I ask them over and over again. They very rarely tell me what they want. Uh, but what I can't afford to do uh, is... Uh, have an opinion on how they're living their lives and try to suggest or give them advice because it's just that. It's just shit advice that, you know, they can get from anybody. And uh, one example when I uh, got experience, <laughs> experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Uh, a patient, a, a client came into a class. We were in Switzerland. I picked her up at the train station. I drove her from the train station to the facility uh, almost the entire way there, she talked about uh, how all men were liars, but all, if not all men were liars, all Middle Eastern men were liars, and, and that all men basically were liars. And so I know pretty much that I'm dealing with a liar for the weekend because, as I said earlier, as Zig Ziglar said, if you're pointing one finger at somebody, three are pointing back at you. If your worldview is that it is filled with liars, well, there's a pretty good chance that somebody is creating that reality, and there's a pretty good chance it's you. And when I asked her what her motivation for doing the class was, she said that she didn't want to be bored for the weekend. So, real highly motivated, uh, liar. Uh, when we interviewed her, a lot of the conflict in her life came to the surface, and it came up as sadness, and it looked uncomfortable, and uh, it was coming up and getting out. And so I went therapeutic, which was stupid, and I said to her, you need to let that, train, that sadness up and out of you. And... Uh, she went from sadness to rage, which is a natural progression, but, I mean, got furious, white hot rage, and looked at me and said, I don't want to, and went back into the sadness. And so we interviewed a little bit longer, and I said, okay, go ahead and stay there. Uh, obviously, she had some sort of, uh, creating some sort of value in there. Uh, the sadness and the conflict, she didn't want to let go of. Uh, I don't know whether she could have, apparently she could not have. But when I told her that she should, uh, she took it out of me because it was a stupid suggestion. Uh, so, uh, again, I want to I observe, uh, if I can do non-critical, non-judgment observation, uh, let you see how other people see you, and uh, you can course correct where you want to go. Then I've done my job. And uh, it's fun for me. Uh, come along. www.micpeakperformance.com